order this regular city council meeting for Monday, February 13th, 2023. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Holly, we call the roll, please. Ben Allsberg? Here. Rines? Here. Gilroy? Here. Lanyon? Present. Hanson? Yes. Pratt? Here. Jenkins? Here. All right, and now I'm looking for approval of this evening's agenda, unless there are, are changes that need to be made. So moved. Thank you. Do I have support? Seven. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? All right, motion carries. Now we have another, uh, we have an audience participation with a maximum of five minutes per presentation. If there's anybody in the audience that would like to come forward. All right, moving along. We have the distinct honor of presenting a 100th birthday recognition to Mr. Alfred Wright. And therefore, I will read that recognition now. So the city of Williamston uh, recognizes Alfred Wright, whereas Alfred Wright of Williamston was born on February 26, 1923, and will be 100 years old on February 26, 2023. Whereas he has lived during the most eventful century of the world's history, and therefore be it resolved that the city council of the city of Williamston wishes Mr. Wright all the best on his momentous day. We hope his special day will be filled with love, laughter, and that his 100th birthday is as amazing as Mr. Wright. We express our honor and our pleasure to extend this certificate of recognition on this 13th day of February 2023 to Alfred Wright on the occasion of his 100th birthday with sincere congratulations and best wishes on his special day and every day thereafter. And it's signed by our council members. So. I believe we have the family of Mr. Wright here, so if you'd come to the podium, please. So, can you tell us a little bit about sure, Mr. I'll tell you a little Mr. About, Wright, and about what that. is your connection with him? He is my stepfather, Okay. and uh, he was born in Virginia, Okay. and uh, he came to Michigan, I'm not sure when, <laughs> but he uh, worked in the Detroit diesel plant, Okay. and him and his wife at the time owned some property. They bought property in, in Weberville planning to retire there. Okay. Which they did. They built a house there and she passed away. So then my mother, Amelia Van Riper, she was married to my father for 60 years and he passed away around the same time. Al came to the Williamston Senior Center for someone to help him get rid of his wife's belongings, <laughs> clothes and shoes. So my mother and a group of women went to his house and helped him with that. And then her and Al started hooking up. And they were in their 70s. And we encouraged them to go ahead and marry. Because they were kind of dating. He was staying late watching TV, falling asleep. And I said, I don't like that you send him home after he's been sleeping on the, you know, that late at night. So I, I encouraged them. and. So did my brother and sister, and they've been married now. This will be their 22nd year. Oh wow, gosh. awesome. So unfortunately, he's now in hospice. Okay. He had a fall back the end of December, a little concussion, and while he was in the hospital, they did, found out he had prostate cancer. So he's been, since that fall, going downhill rapidly. So... Wow. We are so pleased to be able to present this to you. Well, so thank you, and he's been a great forward. stepdad. <laughs> well, please extend our blessings to okay. him and also your mom. What a, what a truly yeah. uh, wonderful story. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much. He's going to appreciate that. Thank you. He knows we're down here getting it. All right. <laughs> he, he enjoyed coming here and paying his water bill. Um, <laughs> so he's does he have, do you have like a special cake plan for his 100th? What is his Well, favorite? unfortunately, he's not even eating right yes, now. Okay. So right. we had always planned on doing that, and it's just not going to be possible. But um, he has all his faculties. Sure. And so he understands what's going on, but it's just that, you know, mentally he's there, but his body is aging out on him. So, yeah, we're, we're hoping he makes it to the 26th. But I keep telling him he's already hit 100. 
Yes. Yes. Birthday yes. month. It's yeah. a birthday yeah. month. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for being thank here. You this for this. Thank you for this. And again, please extend yeah. our best wishes. He's going to gonna appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank you. you. All right, moving along, we have our council meeting minutes of January 23rd of 2023. I'm looking for a motion to approve uh, or changes if necessary. Move to approve. Thank you so much for your support. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Brandon, you had an opportunity to review accounts payable for this week. I did. Uh, I did have a chance to review it. Um, I didn't see anything. That was concerning. Um, obviously, so much what I discussed at the last meeting. This also included a lot of the heavy tax payments that we pay into our county systems. Um, so it's a little larger than it typically would be throughout the year, but um, nothing that was of concern. So with that, I would make a motion to approve checks 76407 through 76472 and ACH 366 through 377. For a total of one million uh, twenty six uh, hundred seven hundred and thirty five dollars and sixty nine cents. Thank you so much, Brandon. I appreciate that. Thank you for taking the time too to go over that with Terry, who is your backup. Do does anybody have any questions regarding accounts payable? Again, it was a very large amount, but as Brandon said, um, you know there was a lot of um, payments for taxes going out that. Um, need to be made. Tom? I have one. Just just out of curiosity, what's the Memorial Park honor for all for 10,200? Go ahead. Please. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. So that is the, the engineering work for the, the non-motorized pathway that's been talked about for some mm -hmm. time. And that another council member had the same question. We, we received a grant to pay for the engineering, so that's what it's for. Yeah, it's through LAP, Mr. Ford. Yep. Great answer. Question. Great question. And just for our uh, viewing community, the Memorial Park Honor for All is um, formerly known as Scout Island, over by the elementary school by Explorer and Discovery. Uh, our former council mem member, Kent Hall, has been working on this. This has been a passion of his for many, many years. Uh, it's still continuing to move forward. Uh, we have footbridges that go over to Scout Island. Eventually, that pathway will connect to the footbridge near the Eagles as well as sidewalks near the elementary school. So it really is becoming part of that walkable community, community that we have always talked about. Any other questions regarding accounts payable? All right, so we have a motion. Do I have support for that? Support. Thank you, Dan. Holly, will you call the roll? Hanson? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Ben Allsper? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Lanyon? Yes. All right, now I'd like to go ahead and move into our public hearing at 7.06. And this is for the Red Cedar River Crossing National Environmental Policy Act, the acronym NEPA. Scott. Well, hello, everybody. It's uh, time okay. for a quick presentation. So there we go. That's our beautiful Red Cedar River, and it happens to be taken right at the location that we're talking about tonight. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, <clears throat> John Bradley is here from Spicer as well. John has been working with the city on the NEPA process. He's been doing all the, the hard leg work and so forth. One of the things that's come out of that process is that because we are crossing the Red Cedar River with a replacement water main, and we'll get into how that's happening, um, we have to do a public hearing. We have to post out that uh, a notice to the public that this is happening and receive any comments. So right. that's why we were doing this. Thank you, Scott. So, uh, you know, you've seen this map before. We have all of our projects for HUD, and um, we had, I didn't leave in here possible drinking water involving loan fund type projects too. But the water system has three crit critical crossings of the Red Cedar River. There's one here by the bridge, there's one here by the park and uh, St. Mary's, and then there's another one that crosses over to our other park that you guys were just talking about a few minutes ago. Um, and we're going to focus in on our crossing right here. So the FEMA flood maps, the old FEMA flood map has this as the 100-year floodplain in this area, and it even includes potentially some of the downtown business district in here. The new maps that are being worked on right now and are finally going, are <coughs> going to get through final approval through the feds um, are what you see on this map here. So yes, it extends out into McCormick Park, and it does have the end of um, Cedar Street by St. Mary's, 
but the, the new models are not showing that it's going to be flooding this area in here. And partly this is due to the fact that that dam is gone that was there years ago, and they're finally catching up to you know the real topography of the area. There's a lot better digital mapping nowadays than what there was many, many years ago. So the, the, the modeling is much more accurate now. And we've signed off from our perspective on this, but it has to go through the federal process. Um, it is important to note that we have a project here that is definitely in the floodplain, and HUD says you have to go through this eight-step process that we're doing right now tonight. Um, there is a water main that's being done in the back alley over here behind City Hall and 109 building and so forth. In this map, it would start showing up in part of those things, but because it's an improved area and it has the, the hard surface of the alley, the buildings, it doesn't impact um, emergency services. That project, um, after we've been talking with the HUD folks, um, we believe that we don't have to include that, but I'm still going to mention it tonight just as a safety precaution um, if that were to be an issue. Um, so focusing in with the aerial image and where we're going to do our work, we're going to have to replace the water main across here. There's a high bank over here, so it's very quickly you're out of the floodplain. And we have a technique that's proposed to not dig up uh, from the surface in this area. Basically, we'll be doing horizontal directional drilling as long as everything with the geology of the area allows us to do that. We don't need to make any modifications. Um, it's too early for us to know 100%, but we're going to be getting ready to do soil borings pretty soon, and that'll give us the, the geology of the area we can know for certain. So we may not have to part the red cedar. Yes, we're, that's <laughs> the whole done objective, before. is not to part the red All right, cedar. Everybody start saying some prayers. So, uh, it's actually not only the, the lowest environmental impact, but it also usually is much cheaper to do it that way. So it's advantageous to us anyways to do that. Um, it also minimizes the amount of time that the project takes to, to accomplish. And uh, we do not foresee it to be something that's you know rough on our nearby residents or businesses or the school or anything like that or the church. Um, so. We're really happy with this, as, as, and we've actually not received any comments from the public. <laughs> and we're presenting now for the camera tonight for anybody that wants to, to uh, see that information. But um, you know, I think we've pretty well met our obligation. Um, we anticipate the work to be going on the summer of 2024, which is next year. Mm -hmm. um, that's our timeline, and it'll happen when all schools out. Great. Any questions from anybody? How long would that typically take from start to end, inclement weather? What would you s say would be a length of time for that project? John, why don't you take that one? Okay. Hi, John. Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Once they start, they can't stop. Right. Um, what they don't want to have happen is they have to pre-drill a hole and solidify it and then ream it out so that they can pull the pipe through the need. But I wouldn't imagine, that's not a very long crossing, so I wouldn't imagine that's going to take more than a couple days. Wow. I mean, they have to fuse, they'll have to fuse the pipe, you know, it'll be one long contiguous section laid out on, however they decide to lay it out on, on the ground. Sure. Whether it's sort of Grand River or to take a turn somewhere, but I don't think it would take more than two days. So then, when the, where the pipes connect on the north side and the south side, um, what type of disruption is that going to create? As far as you're going to have to dig down to connect those two pipes on each end. There'll, there'll be an excavated pit basically mm -hmm. on both ends of, of okay. this work. Um, if you're looking up here where the drilling machine is at, they'll go down into the ground. But usually you, you'll have an excavation there. That turns into that connection pit connection spot. Where, okay. you, where you go and, and you know, traditional lay pipe and a sure. trench type of thing. Sure. So, uh, so our side, I mean, McCormick side is obviously our property. The other side, is that private property that we'd be hitting on? Or yep, the right of street? It it's, says right away. It's okay. all the right of way of North Cedar Street. Right, the perfect. plat is 66 foot wide to the river and through the river okay. and on the other yeah. side. I just want to make sure that wasn't made something like private property that you would like start digging up and excavating. But. 
Wow, I right away doesn't go through the river, but it, it yeah. right up to the river. It goes mm -hmm. over the river and through the woods. Oh, yeah, <laughs> over the river. Yes. <laughs> um, so when you did the, uh, the the pipeline work there underneath the railroad, in yes. my part of town there was no disruption of service for the water that I can remember at all. That was a similar uh, type of construction technique, but they actually did a, a horizontal jack and, and they, they put a steel casing put a in pipe first, inside a pipe. and then they slid the pipe in afterwards. Right. So that had like an auger in it, and they pushed the casing as the auger advanced. Mm -hmm. Imagine like, you know, those, the big drill bits that you used yeah. to go through wood and stuff, you put it on a much larger scale. So that's similar, but different. This has a smaller head, goes through and, and, and makes a smaller hole first, and then when they get to the other side, they pull like a ream type thing, a, a widener, they attach to the end, they pull that through, and it pushes the soil aside and makes a bigger hole as it pulls the pipe through. So we anticipate, there's a six inch pipe there right now that is around 100 years old, mm -hmm. and um, we don't have an exact date, except we believe it's in the early 1920s that it was installed. We don't have a real good idea of where it's at, except it crosses the river, <laughs> and uh, within you know probably a 30 foot wide spot that we know of. So right now, it puts us at uh, a little bit of a precarious position, and we hope nothing happens before the project. Right. Excellent. So do you expect to see a, any serious disruptions in water service? Not really, because we're, we, it, we, part of the work of, of preliminary engineering is to figure out where is that, that existing pipe at, even if we have to excavate on both ends to make sure that we know for sure where it's at. We'll move over sufficiently far enough that we shouldn't have any issues. Um, there are some techniques that we might employ to, um, even if we had to use ground penetrating radar, you know, there's things like that that I've got contacts with people that we can, if we need to, use that technology to get a good idea of where it's at. But we'll install the new one, test it, pressure test it, back detest it, then get it tied to the new system and tie over and abandon the other one. Great. Right. Brandon, do you have a question? No. Okay. All right. Sure. I have one. Oh, and John? The only oh. just. The only disruption will be the, the tying itself. Okay. After they're done pressurizing. Yeah. Okay. There will be, uh, because we have to tie over to a line that has services on it, we'll have to coordinate with those adjacent homeowners and the church, the school. Yep. That's why we want to do this during the summertime. All right. Excellent. Scott, did you have Yeah, I'm curious if the pipe broke somehow. Oh, one of the new one. Does the water end up in the river or is it below the river? It will work its way to the river. It will, uh, it'll, it'll bleed to the river. Does it get up to yeah. okay. How long is the new pipe expected to be good for? Oh, it's it's gonna be, it's gonna be a a PVC or a high density polyethylene pipe. It'll more than it'll last longer than you and I are around. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's good enough. It should right. be good for another hundred years or more. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. All right, if there's no further questions for John or Scott, I'm going to go ahead and close out this. Uh, do we need a motion to close out the public hearing? Okay. All right, we're going to close public hearing now at 718 and go back into our other agenda items. And we're coming up on our action items. We have the appointment of Jeffrey Sand to the Economic Development Corporation, TIFA 2A, TIFA 2B, for a term that's set to expire 0630 of 2027. Looking for that motion. Thank you so much. Do I have support? Support. Cool. Thank you both. Holly, we call the roll, please. Jenkins? Yes. Ben Alsper? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Lanyon? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Pratt? Yes. All right. Our next action item, last action item of the evening, is to set our city manager annual evaluation. We were just talking about this earlier. <laughs> Tomorrow is our city manager, John Hansen's one year anniversary. We're very excited to celebrate that. And one thing um, that we were uh, going to do is we're going to uh, give an evaluation. So I'm going to turn this over to John, let him walk us through his memo. It's very short and quick. Thank you, Mayor Gilroy, members of council. So yeah, it's just a best management practice to evaluate your city manager every year. Um, something that I've gone through over the past what, 16 years now, I guess. and. What will happen from here, assuming that council sets the evaluation, is <clears throat> I'll send out, uh, it's, a, it's more of a narrative evaluation form for all of you to, to work your way through, and then we'll discuss that um, at the meeting in March. 
Um, it's really a, a, a great opportunity to make sure we're all on the same page. And you know, when city managers, your fate is somewhat linked inexplicably or inexplicably to the, the fate of the city. And I think we're in, in really good shape. But <clears throat> there's always um, ways we can improve our communication and, and make sure we're on the same page. So I um, don't have much to add to that. I, mean, I look forward to the process. It's, yeah. it's, it's not anything that I've ever viewed as, as, a, as a negative. Sure. Um, it's my job to make sure that it stays on the positive. So, yeah. All right. um, but please do, um, when you get the tool, um, if you have any questions about it, it's, it's six or seven questions. It's, I guess I'll just, I've been doing this long enough that I think I've kind of graduated past the uh, rate to one, two, one through five. Because sure. you end up with a lot of you know 4.6s and 3.9s and some fives. Um, lots, of, lots of fives, but, um, <laughs> but the point is, it's for it to be more meaningful for all of us um, is, is to have that, that open dialogue. Fantastic. So that's, that's a wrap. All right, well, it's a, it's a very easy motion. I'm looking for that motion. I'll make a motion to set the city manager's annual evaluation for the regular council meeting of March 13th, 2023. Thank you sure. so much. Thank you, Wolf. Uh, does anybody have any questions regarding this? I can tell you, current council members, we've not done this with the city manager. And so I look forward to it because I think it's going to be a great conversation, a great dialogue. It gives us opportunity to give you feedback and ask you know, questions. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about that. And I think all of us around this table have probably done performance evaluations and reviews in our, in our professional careers. So with that being said, if there's no questions, I will ask Holly to call the roll. Ben Osberg? Yes. Rines? Yes. Gilroy? Yes. Lanyon? Yes. Hansen? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. All right. That concludes our action items for this evening. Moving along, we're at our discussion items. Uh, one standing item that we have on this is our road dive. Do we have an update? Scott, you want to give us just a brief update? Absolutely. I am very pleased to report that Spicer got the, uh, I guess I'll call them 95% drawings, okay. Um, because they're at, at, a, at a stage that we're done taking our you know, changes and so forth to them, but it needs to go to MDOT for their review and comment. Once MDOT gets back with us, the next step would be to schedule a public hearing for that. Excellent. We're getting that, closer. Uh, so we are getting closer. Um, I believe that MDOT also would like council to readopt a resolution, sure. so it's getting about time for us to bring that forward too. All right. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It, that was a great update. Does anybody have any questions regarding that? What, what kind of resolution would that be? Um, it basically indicates that the City of Williamston, the Council, is in favor of MDOT moving forward and working with us in partnership mm -hmm. to do the road diet. Okay. Will there be a dollar figure associated with that? Uh, there will be a dollar figure associated with us because um, the city is initiating the change. Um, so far, we've looked at it not being, uh, that resolution isn't a dollar figure, but we are committing to the fact that the city is going to cover the costs associated with changing the striping and some and signage. This is not a surprise. Yeah. So. Correct. And there's been some question about um, the lights and how that works, whether there's a protected left turn and that kind of thing. So that, that aspect is being still, it's in discussion still. Thank you. John. Thank you. Prior to adapting the resolution, it's our job to let you know about what this thing's going to cost. So we'll have that prior to the resolution. Okay. I know where you were going with that. So if you want to adopt the resolution, <laughs> it's straight out. No. Sorry, and right. we've done a lot of resolutions for a lot of projects. So it's something that um, a majority of the council members are familiar with. Brandon, you had to? Uh, we had talked previously about having him not come and talk to us mm -hmm. as long as asking questions. Is that gonna, would that be something that happened? before the resolution, after the resolution, now that we're kind of like now intimately working with them on stuff? So. It'd be before. Okay. Yeah. okay. Excellent. Great. My last question for that is, once we do the resolution, um, when do you think we will see this project kick off? Well, we anticipate the project being able to happen during construction season this year. Okay. Excellent. Probably after the end of school? Post-Jubilee. Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Post Jubilee, yes, John. Yeah, so that's all the and that's great feedback. And that mm -hmm. those are all things the, you know Grand River's under the jurisdiction of, of MDOT, but sure. there are things like because we are the driver for the project, right? right? We can we can pick when we would we would start the job. Okay. That makes that makes perfect sense.
community. And that gives us enough time too, to mm -hmm. educate our community to make sure that we put the, the word out there yep. and, and really kind of drive it home that, sorry for the pun, that um, changes are happening on Grand River and we want to make sure that, that our residents and businesses are aware. It's going to be, a, and we're going to talk about this in a couple couple weeks and in, in at the visioning session, it's going to be a very busy construction season, yes. which is great. A lot of these projects are, um, they're due, now I wouldn't say they're overdue, but there's a, there's a real coordinating effort we're going to have to bring, you know, whatever we can do to, you know, numb the pain, I guess, at this point of <laughs> construction, we right. do that. Because well, frankly, if we're the ones, we're the right. ones who, you know, mm -hmm. deal with uh, the, the concerned residents, and you know, we, we're up to that challenge, but right. if we can avoid that, you know, that. This particular right. project was, I mean, once boots hit the pavement, it's supposed to be relatively quick, right? Yeah, correct. It's not a matter of like a few days, weeks. What are we? I can't imagine it being more than <coughs> a couple days of painting in this direction. Yeah, they have to. They might have to grind some of the old markings yeah. off. Yeah. They're not going to paint over them with, with black. They, and the man dot said we have to grind them. Sure. So um, there's that operation. There's the new painting, but it's all coordinated, and it needs to happen systematically and quickly because you don't want traffic just wandering all over the place. So, sure. And then, um, would the lights be at the same? Would the new lights be at the same time, or would that? That's I'm assuming that the, it's all got to work hand in hand. That's part of the discussion with them, Doc, okay. because they there it could be that it's it's we do striping and signage first, and then they might want to see how things react to that. Um, so that's that's some of the stuff that we've been discussing with them. There's not a, there, I don't have a hard answer for you on that. Will we have signage north, west, east, south indicating new traffic shift, new traffic pattern? Yes. So that way, as people are coming into town from any direction, they're going to see that? Yes. Okay. I, I do want to add one little thing. As we've been talking with people in the North Putnam area with our project, mm -hmm. the, you know, we've talked about the fact that we're adding bike lanes, and people have asked questions about they're happy. I've had many people say, I'm really happy to hear that you're putting bike lanes in there. What are you doing about, you know, the Four Corners and, and Grand River? And I'm, I can actually say, well, by the way, and I've been able to lead into and tell them of, of what we're doing, and it's been received very, very well so far. Great. Excellent. Terry, last question. Is there anything we can do to help MDOT decide that there should be a protected left turn signal there? <laughs> You've already studied that. Is it is yeah. that driven strictly by numbers, or is there? Yeah. To some extent, it's driven by numbers, but um, it, we we have indicated that we we get this question a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a community involvement type thing that we could <clears throat> we'd say? Well, fifty-seven people signed up, and they signed a petition, or anything like that. Or I mean, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know what drives them to decide that that's something they should do. Well. Um, to some extent, you do have to let the numbers drive it to an ex because, I mean, it, speed limits are the same kind of thing. You right. can't arbitrarily put, you know, a 14 mile an hour speed limit because you want one. Right. Um, to some extent, the, the numbers and the, the traffic engineering has to right. substantiate what you're doing. Just wondering. Thank you, Terry. That was a good question. All right, um, we'll go ahead and conclude that discussion. We'll move along now to correspondence received information only. We do have a notice from Consumers Energy. Uh, the other one is our North Putnam Street construction notice. I love this. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be hand delivered to Our the residents? Was. It already was. It already Fantastic. Was. Excellent. <laughs> so then I, must, I can assume safely that this is what uh, William Street will get. Um, once it, we tee that up for later this summer, this one obviously it's um, anticipated start beginning of May, anticipated open to traffic August 19th, final completion October 6th. So this would be the format for the rest of the projects throughout this summer and also um, the upcoming years. That's correct. Great. Excellent. That's cool. Have we had any feedback from residents yet now that they've received these? Uh, I know that. And I know we, you were speaking with them. Yeah, uh, we have made personal contact with everybody directly adjacent to the project. Um, the mailer that you see in the packet, a very similar one, was delivered via U.S. Post mail. You know the the snail mail, if you want to call right, it that. Right. Um, to everybody north of the river. Okay. That's within the city limits. We do know that it has made it outside of the city limits a little bit because of some of the you know the, the postal routes that are there. 
Um, and we've gotten two phone calls so far. Okay. Excellent. Well, um, we'll continue to talk about this as May gets closer. Thank you. So I keep seeing this consumer's energy notice thing. It's just showed up in the last three packages or so. What, what are they, are they just raising the rates? Is that the deal or what? John, I'll let you handle that. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Gilroy, Morris Council. So consumers, I, I, I'll admit I didn't even read this one because <laughs> we get them so often. But anytime they go for the uh, the Public Service Commission, um, they, they have to request, they have to hold a public hearing and notify um, all the communities or their customers that they're, they're in a public hearing to raise rates. So I assume that's what this one is. Again, I didn't read this one. Yes, Tim, thank you. Yes, this is a gas cost uh, recovery factor case. And it's where they calculate the actual cost of the actual gas that they're providing and they make that uh, into a factor to put on, on bills. Okay. So it's a way of showing what their supply cost is for gas. Okay. And interested parties can come there and challenge that <coughs> by saying you could get gas cheaper from a different source, perhaps. Okay. It's, it's very complicated and you have to have an expert witness. But okay. this is what happens every year and then at the end of the year they have a gas cost uh, recovery reconciliation to see what actually they spent and whether then there should be a surcharge or a uh, or a refund based on the difference. Great. Thank so you. it's like an annual event though. Yes. Yes. So yes. yes. Every single year they, they, they have a cash cost. Increase every three months or something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a feeling if it was an increase every three months we'd probably be a little bit we'd be talking about it more. <laughs> Council Member Hanson, don't yes. Make your vacation plans based on that big refund you expect. Yeah. Right. 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 That's the only advice. That's the only advice I can give. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a credit. On the yeah. 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 All right. All right. Moving along, we've got our department head reports. So I'll just turn this right back over to City Manager Hanson. Just a brief report. I mean, we have a lot going on, as as I stated. Um, looking forward to getting together with everybody on on March first at, at the Nisa building. Um, I had the opportunity today to have lunch with the Garden Club. That was fantastic. And we talked about all kinds of things related to Williamson. It was great. It's a really great group. And we did, we did talk about the road diet. And folks were, were pretty excited about that. And they do a really great job for us in town. So it, it was fun to be there. And a lot of the folks I already knew. But it, it was cool to just have a nice dialogue about we got pretty far, I almost said weeds, but that'd be a really bad pun when you're talking about the garden club, but, but we got pretty far into some details of, of a lot of different things going on in town. All, all of them positive, so it was, it was good. Great. That's thank all you I so have. Much. And I do want to say thank you. I mean, it's been a, it's been a, now the action items are done, I'm going to make one full year, so yeah. it's not official until the end of the meeting, but so I <laughs> appreciate everybody. Um, <laughs> got, we have we, that addition. Yeah, right. You <laughs> It's been, a, been a, a great year, I think, um, for the community, <coughs> for, for me personally, and, and I just have a lot of gratitude for all of you, so thank you for that. And to the community, thank you. Thank it you. feels like there's a whole bunch of things that you've kind of teed up, and now we're ready to hit, knock them off the, down the course, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, yeah. It's going to be a busy year. Yeah. All right, moving along, we have our report from the Livingston County Billing our Department of Building and Safety Engineering. Uh, they handle all of our permitting in town. It looks like we've got some work going on. Not as much as usual, but that's okay. It's winter time, and, and so I just look forward to seeing that each time we get the report. It, it lets us know that activity is happening here in Williamson. If you do have questions regarding any type of permitting that you're seeing on these reports, please uh, reach out to John. He will get those questions answered for you. With that being said, we're coming up uh, close to the end of our agenda. It's time for committee and subcommittee reports. Would anybody like to share from any other meetings? Any meetings? Yes, Tom. I had a NISA meeting Thursday. Um, basically just two agenda items. One was they finally came to a resolution with some uh, Weberville dealings that they've been doing with, so it was nice just to have that kind of summed up. And then um, we mentioned last meeting, I think, last NISA meeting, that Deputy Chief Rod Feaster had yeah. retired. So. Um, NISA is in the process of going through the proper steps to post that position. Okay. We did hire an interim deputy chief. Okay. Um, so we'll look forward to seeing how that plays out. Okay. 
Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Any other council members? Brandon? We didn't have a meeting. Um, we were hoping to have a meeting. So I guess on that note, I would say if you know anyone that would like to join Planning Commission, yes. that would be great because um, if we have one person missing, we can't have quorum, so we can't have a meeting. Uh, so if you know anyone, yeah. let them know. And the other thing too, um, we do have seats on planning for township residents. So it does not have to be a city of Williamston one, one seat yeah. um, that is available. So uh, please spread the word um, if you are interested in serving the city and giving of your time and talents. We would greatly appreciate you submitting an application for a seat. Any other meetings that have occurred? No? All right. Moving along, it's time for our audience participation. I'm not seeing anybody out there, so we'll keep moving right along. We have council member comments for this evening. I will start with Dan Ryan's down on this end. Um, no comments. All right. Scott? Just that that's the trail stuff that's going on is very exciting. Yes, it is. I wasn't familiar with it, and now because of the reading, it's very cool. Excellent. Thank you. Brandon? Uh, I just want to thank Scott for the letter that we sent out on North Putnam Street. Um, I came to John a couple months ago with a lot of concerns and questions about like what was going on as a resident that's affected, and that one was great. It answered a lot of the questions, and I think it helped a lot of the residents there. So thank you and everyone else that worked on that. Okay, thank you. Steve? Just uh, appreciation to John and his staff that uh, being a new person, I ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. And he's always very responsive. I sent an email on Saturday morning, knowing he wouldn't get it until today, assuming I wouldn't get an answer. But by 10 o'clock, I had an answer and information. So I appreciate that. All right. Terry. Talked to several people about this, uh, the Red Cedar Trail thing, the kayaking trail and all that. Okay. And all universally positive and very solidly positive, too. So we're doing a good thing. Great. Okay. And we're looking forward to another Valentine's Day with you. <laughs> well, technically, it's the first day of Wednesday because you know we're going to be Tom, any comments? No comments for me. Thanks. All right. Well, um, I want to echo what, what uh, most of our council members have said. We are so thankful that you are here. It's, uh, you know, so happy birthday, uh, you know, basically, uh, anniversary, all that good stuff. Um, you've made it such an impact in a year, and you're uh, truly leading us down the right path. Um, I am so fortunate to be able to have my meetings with you, work with you on, on ideas, um, talk things through. Um, I, I really enjoy our, our Friday Friday meetings so that we can continue to move Williamson forward. Um, I want to thank my mayor pro tem here to the to the left of me. He was in charge while I was on vacation to walk down in New Orleans. Um, celebrating a little bit of Mardi Gras, but also it was uh, a work trip for my husband. So um, with that in mind, I should have brought y'all some beads, but I don't know what you've done for them. So, but you know, it's still winter time out there, even though we're experiencing some very warm weather. So with that, I just want to remind our residents, as I always do every council meeting, uh, there is no parking on the city streets from 2 a.m. to 5 a.m. And that's so that our DPW workers can get out there and clear any snow that uh, may fall. This is Michigan. Um, the, the weather is crazy. It's, it's up and down every day with these temperatures. So, you know, it's always a, you know, it's Michigan. So I'll leave it at that. Um, I appreciate all of you being here. I look forward to when we're able to sit down for the visioning session uh, starting in March and all of the exciting projects that are coming towards Williamson. And with that, I will go ahead and adjourn at 738.